How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a mid six figure full time Amazon seller and in today's video I'm going to be diving into some beginner mistakes that are very common when first starting out selling on Amazon. There's a lot of pitfalls to avoid and honestly the learning curve of selling on Amazon is super high. So it's my goal through this channel to help make you a better Amazon seller. Um, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already checked it out, there's going to be a link down below for our completely free Amazon seller discord with tons of people in there, over 14,000 people in there sharing tons of great free information. I'd love to see you in there to kind of keep learning to avoid some of these pitfalls that you might come across as a beginner but without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the video So the first beginner mistake that I want to talk about that I see all the time is people start out with way too complicated of a business plan. Um, I see a lot of beginners who want to get into selling on Amazon and instantly they just uh, you know, follow what the gurus are doing. They buy a, a really expensive course and they start doing private label or wholesale. Um, in my opinion, those are not great business models to start out as an Amazon seller, especially if you don't have business experience. If you do have some experience, uh, wholesale could be viable for you. I still would recommend getting started with something like online arbitrage or even selling used books. If you are very limited on capital, selling used books can be an awesome way to start. But I would highly encourage any true beginners to the Amazon space to avoid doing private label or wholesale right at the beginning. And the reason for that is because you're going to make much more expensive mistakes if you start with those business models. For example, I've heard a lot of horror stories of people who start out doing private label and they're just starting out their Amazon business already in the hole four or $5,000. They can't sell their products. They're not sure what to do. Um, and that's because they started an Amazon business, they started a brand, they started private label before they even knew how to send in an FBA shipment. Um, so in my opinion, you should definitely learn the basics by doing used books or some kind of arbitrage, whether that be going to Walmart, uh, stores like Walmart doing retail arbitrage, or buying from websites um, doing online arbitrage. I would highly recommend starting out one of those ways. That way you can make much cheaper mistakes and learn from those mistakes and then turn that into something much larger if you do want to get into wholesale or private label down the road. The second beginner mistake that I want to talk about is something that I see pretty often. It's uh, when you first start out, you are going to be able to leverage cash back websites. You're going to be able to leverage credit card cash back in order to create basically free profit for your business. So if you're not already using a tool like Rakuten or using a credit card that's going to give you good rates as far as cash back goes, you're wasting money. Um, you want to be shopping around for the best cash back rates. Um, a website that's going to help you with that is called Cashback Monitor. Uh, that's going to show you the highest cash back rates that you're able to get, but it's super important to make sure that you're able to leverage uh, the amount of cash back that you can get on when you're making these online purchases because sometimes uh, you can save up to 10-15% of your original purchase cost, which is going to make you a ton of extra money and, and could even make some items that were not profitable more profitable. Um, so it can help you in the long run as well as um, leveraging credit cards has a whole bunch of other benefits. Um, I will add the caveat that especially if you're starting out, do not spend more money um, on your credit card than you have in the bank. That is way too risky, especially if you're a beginner. Um, but using those credit cards will allow you to, at bare minimum, just get 1% to 2% in basically free money as you're spending your money as you go. Um, and as you grow your business and learn more and more, uh, having those credit cards will allow you to spend more. Um, it'll increase the, the buying power because of uh, the delay that you have to pay on those credit cards, right? Um, sometimes you're actually even able to buy and sell the item and get the money for it before that credit card comes do. But again, I will say that is on the riskier side of strategies. So definitely don't do that if you are a true beginner to this space. Another very common mistake that I see beginners on Amazon make is just overthinking things. Um, similar to starting out with private label or wholesale, uh, they jump into the business with way too high of expectations. First of all, um, they think they're going to instantly be making uh, thousands and thousands of dollars a month uh, when really sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to get over that learning curve. And specifically within that, a lot of times people will invest in things that they don't need as a true beginner, um, like very, very expensive courses. Uh, in my opinion, you can benefit from those if you have a little bit of experience with Amazon already, especially the really expensive ones. Um, and then also within that, um, a lot of people will do things like start with an LLC, um, create, uh, you know, business bank accounts and stuff like that. Like that will help you in the long run, but don't feel like that's a requirement for getting started selling on Amazon. Um, I personally didn't do business bank accounts or LLCs um, for even beyond my very first year on Amazon. There's no real implications to that. Um, the only reason that you want to go ahead and get an LLC is to, to do some 
something else that's another common beginner mistake, which is thinking that ungating is super, super hard. Um, it's actually really not that difficult. Um, if you want to watch a video on how to get ungated, uh, there's going to be a video right up here in this corner, completely free. I'll teach you how to get ungated. But I see a lot of beginners jump in, create LLCs so that they can get ungated, um, even start doing wholesale orders um, when it's just not the way to start. Um, those fees that you paid to start your LLC uh, to create a new bank account, those are all that's a bunch of time that you locked up. Um, and instead of taking action and starting a business and then implementing that stuff as you go, uh, you actually just delayed the start on Amazon and you, uh, therefore, uh, you delayed the, the learning process of selling on Amazon, which is the most important part about selling on Amazon. There is a lot of people who will try to shortcut things on Amazon. Um, they will try to cut corners when really the best way to sell on Amazon is just to start selling on Amazon, make mistakes as you go, um, and you'll learn from those. Sometimes they might be a little expensive. Um, I'll save you from a couple beginner mistakes here. Uh, don't fill your uh, boxes heavier than 50 pounds. Um, that's a very common beginner mistake and can actually get you fined and sometimes even suspended if you do it um, a whole bunch of times in a row. Another thing you're going to want to keep in mind when you are selling on Amazon is that Amazon is billing you every month for the stuff that you keep in their warehouse. Um, that's something that a lot of people might not know about. Um, so keep that in mind when you are when you leave inventory in the warehouse, you are paying for that inventory to sit there. Um, and on top of the fees that you're paying for your inventory to sit there not selling, um, let's say you've got a product that you've been, it's been at the FBA warehouse for two, three months and it's just not selling. Not only is it sitting there and you're paying fees on it sitting there, you're also essentially leaving money sitting there. This is a super important concept within your Amazon business is you should not be sitting money, uh, leaving it to, to generate 0% return on investment because that's essentially what those dead products are doing. Uh, it's super important to go ahead and liquidate those products. Don't get too attached to those. We don't wait for the prices to come back up, especially if it's been two or three months. Um, in my personal Amazon business, if I haven't sold a unit for a month, that's the point where I'm going to cut to break even or near break even and just sell that, sell that product because I don't want to sit on dead inventory because dead inventory is dead money and dead money is not growing at the same rate that your better inventory would grow at. So while you, maybe you hold an item for two, three months, hoping that the price will come back up, I would have sold that item in month one. And then by month three, I've already invested that money and then sold something else using that money. So I've been able to generate returns while you might've been hanging on to that, um, hoping that the prices might come up, not accusing you of, of being a person who would do that, obviously. But I want you to keep that in mind as you are starting out on Amazon. Don't get emotionally attached to the products you've made. I know they feel like uh, pretty powerful decisions to, you know, when you pull the trigger on an item, you're really excited about it. Uh, don't get attached to it. If the data tells you it's time to sell, then it's time to sell, reinvest, and that's how you're going to be able to grow your business. Another mistake that I see very often and probably the biggest mistake you can make as an Amazon seller is not taking action. Um, if you're watching this video right now, there's probably a good chance that you know enough about selling on Amazon that you should have already generated more sales than you have. Um, if that's you, let me know in the comments and then go uh, go buy some inventory right now. Um, but that's a very common thing that I see is people just get information paralysis. Um, they have too much information. They know too much when really the best way to get out there, start working on your business is just to take action, make those mistakes like I talked about. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and end this video. Go take action. If I provided any value for your business, please add some value to mine and hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down below as well. I'm always happy to answer those, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.